Hi friends, welcome to biologyexamsforyou.com. In this tutorial, we are going to discuss about the protein folding and associated diseases. Protein folding is actually the scripts of life that is actually making enzymes, all the enzymes that is required for all metabolic activities inside the cell. This is a protein structure. There is a primary structure. Then primary structure consists of amino acids that are joined by peptide bonds. In the secondary structure, you can see that this primary structure is folded by some other bonds like hydrogen bonds. And in tertiary structure, further folding of secondary structure is happening. And this is a biologically active conformation. And in certain proteins, we can see many poly polypeptide chains, which is called the subunits, and that makes a quaternary structure. The key point is the primary structure, the constituent or the amino acids in the primary structure determines the 3D structure of a protein. Protein folding is not at all a random process. It is the set of ordered pathways by which protein folds into native functional conformation. It was actually created by many bonds like a peptide bond, hydrogen bond, disulfide bond, and hydrophobic interactions. These are the bonds in protein structure. You know that this is a peptide bond that is formed between two amino acids and primary bond, the major bond in primary structure is peptide bond that is between amino acids. A disulfide bond is a bond that is formed between amino acids that contain sulfur residues or sulfur containing amino acids like cysteine and this is a disulfide bond that is involved in the formation of secondary structure and this is a hydrogen bond. In the case of secondary beta pleated sheets there are maybe many chains, polypeptide chains and these chains are joined by hydrogen bonds between amino acids in two different genes and this is the most important interaction which is a hydrophobic interaction we can see this suppose an amino acid which is uh, which hasn't doesn't have an affinity towards water that will remain inside the co inside the core of the protein whereas hydrophilic amino acids are oriented outside and that may, that is called as a hydrophobic interaction Now let us discuss how protein folds. Protein folding is assisted by many proteins which, is, which one group is called as molecular chaperones. It includes heat shock proteins like HSP70, chaperonins, nucleoplasmins. Then prolyl cis-trans isomerase that is involved in conversion of trans, trans cis-trans conversion of X-proline. And PDI that is called as protein, protein disulfide isomerase that is involved in shuffling of disulfide bonds. The function of these proteins is not to gate the protein in, in proper folding, but is actually preventing improper folding and aggregation of protein. And this is how chaperonins work. You can see right here, as once a protein is formed in the cytoplasm, that this, this will enter into chaperonin cage. We can tell like that. And this there is a lid that will close the cage so that this protein could fold inside this chaperonin protein without any outside interactions without any outside disturbances of other molecules inside the cell. Once the protein is fully fully folded, it will it will be released to the outside and that becomes functional. That is actually this protein is actually helping the pro this chaperonin is actually helping the protein to fold independently inside without the disturbance of other proteins inside the cell. And this is prolyl cis-trans isomerase, an enzyme that is involved in the conversion of transpeptide bonds to cispeptide bonds. And protein disulfide isomerase or PDI is the enzyme that is involved in a disulfide bond shuffling. And disulfide bonds are formed at different stages, but before fully fully forming the fully formal conformation stage, these formed bonds are shuffled to make a fully functional protein. And protein stability, a number of factors are involved that determines protein stability. Primary structure is actually the main bond involved is the peptide bond. But a secondary structure, apart from peptide bond, there is hydrogen bond between polypeptide chains. In tertiary structure, the bond is disulfide bond that makes it more folded and that is a native biologically active conformation. Disulfide bonds are formed only in endoplasmic reticulum, that is in only in highly oxidizable environment. And why we, do, why we study all this protein folding and all such things? This is to engineer novel proteins and to get better insight on diseases associated with protein folding. Now let us look into some of the diseases that is associated with protein folding. One is CJD disease or Creutzfeldt-Jakob disease. It's a neurodegenerative disease 
that is caused by prions or infectious protein, proteinaceous particles. In a normal cell, there is a counterpart which is called as PRPC and that will be converted to PRPSC, the scrapie, that accumulates and kill nerve cells. This mutant one, that is PRPSC, it has the same sequence but it has, it, it has folded differently to form a beta sheets that is highly protease insensitive, insoluble and that is protease insensitive whereas PRPC is protein sensitive and is the structure is alpha helical structure and this disease is actually a protein folding deformality conversion of alpha sheets into beta sheets making it highly stable and this is one of the most common disease associated with protein folding that is AD disease Alzheimer's disease this is also caused by the deposition of certain deposits of cer certain proteins which is called as amyloids uh, this is also a protein folding disorder that is caused by a beta peptide uh, uh, formation of a beta peptide from amyloid precursor protein gene that is actually causing deposits inside the neural neurons uh, making connections a bit difficult to convey signals and hope things are clear you are with biologyexamsforyou.com thank you so much for watching